Hi, welcome to TLC's Creative Art Corner. I'm Miss Susan, and I hope you had a blessed week. Today we are going to make a batik. What is batik? Well, it's a wax-resistant dyeing method that's done on cloth that originated on the island of Java in Indonesia, but it can be found in many countries such as Africa and Asia. Melted wax is applied on the cloth where color is not wanted. Then the cloth is dyed in a cold vat of dye. This process is repeated for each color. The wax will crack a little bit because the fabric is flexible and the wax is not. So the final color for the background is traditionally an indigo, which is a denim blue, but other colors can be used, like black or red or any color you want. So here are some examples. Here's a traditional blue that's done very, very familiar. You've probably seen this motif all around. You can see flowers. Here you can see the cracks in this particular one. The designs can be geometric or they can be free flowing. But today we are going to do our batik on copy paper, or A4 paper, using wax crayons and watercolor. So here are some examples. The first example I'll show you is I did a um, little fish in this, in a, like an aquarium. So I, you know, I colored it all and then, then I laminated it and hung it on with a, um, a ribbon. So I thought it was really, really colorful and really nice. So here's another one I did, something a little on the spiritual side. Um, yeah, I really thought it was really, really vibrant. Now where you want it to be white, you have to put white crayon, otherwise you're gonna get the, the color of the, the, um, the watercolor that you're putting on it. And then I laminated it and, and um, punched holes, put a ribbon, and there I have it, I can hang it. You can hang it in the window if you want, if you used thinner paper or whatever. Here's another one I did. And this was done in a circle. Okay, and then I cut the circle out and I glued it onto black construction paper. But you could put it on any color of construction paper. I thought it was really, really wonderful. Nice, nice and vibrant colors that came out. You could make a bookmark and laminate it. You could do your name if you wanted anything. Anything is possible. Here's another type of bookmark you could do with your initials. This was my friend. She was, we were doing this together the other night and then we laminated it, so it was really fun. You could do a landscape. Now these I got off of stencils. I, I looked up stencil landscape and then uh, it came out a coloring page. And uh, we just colored it in. So that's one option. Here's another. This one was done with black on it, so it looks more like an evening, where this one is more of a daytime. And then we also did a, a, I also did a unicorn. And this one I did a, a pinkish or a red background. And I did put white, I wanted white all around the background, but for some reason it didn't take too much, the white, but you can still see it's faded, so I'm, I'm really pleased with it. And this was a, a silver crayon, so that was really, really pleased. So what are the materials we're gonna use? Well, the first thing we're gonna do always is to protect our surface and put an apron on. We're going to need a placemat or a smooth, something smooth to work on, okay? We're going to use wax crayons, A4 copy paper, okay? Pencil, watercolors, and we're just gonna probably you know, use the blue or black, but it's up to you, you can use any color. A sponge, or you can use a watercolor brush. You're going to have to use some water in a little container to put it in. Um, a cloth or paper towels. Now, another option is to use coloring pages that you can go search on the internet and you can look up coloring pages for animals or landscape, unicorn, flowers, whatever. So I did like a, um, an initial, so you can look up your initial. Okay, this is a seahorse. Okay, I did one of a parrot. And I pu pulled out one that was a stained glass. So there's many, many options, but I think today I am going to do the seahorse. Okay, so let's press pause, go get your materials and come on back and we'll do the project together. So here we are, back. Let's get started. First, the thing we're going to do is take our paper and lightly sketch our design. Now, I have already decided to do mine on a coloring page and I chose a seahorse. Now, the, plain, the picture was very plain and I decided I needed some some seaweed down at the bottom and some coral. So I sketched some of that in, as you can see here. Okay, I've sketched my coral, coral and seaweeds. Okay, and then I'm going to decide my color choices and my layout. So I already chose some. I have green here and pink where I want to put all my colors. 
and then I'm going to do, I know I'm going to do this sort of stripey here. And then at the end, we take it with black. Okay. All right, so there I have my design. And I think up here I was going to put some yellow for the hair. Okay. And I might add another color to it so it gives it a little bit of variety. Okay, so that's my, my color scheme. All right, I'm just going to color in all of my colors. Now here's the finished piece. I, I went ahead and finished it all in, so it's nice and bright. And now that I see it finished, I decided I'm going to add a little bit more blue and press harder, okay, which is fine. I think I probably used two blues on this when I did it, and that's okay. okay. So, and then I put white. Where's my white one? I did put white in these bubbles, okay, and around the eye. Now the last thing you're going to do is take your black crayon and outline your whole piece. So I, I've already um, did some of it, so I'm going to go around and really darken it, and that will make the colors pop more. Now, wherever you want it to be white, you have to put white crayon. Otherwise, you're going to get the color of the final dye or whatever dye you put on it. Because the wax, the crayon, is your resist. Okay, so I want to be sure I have the, the white crayon around my bubbles. And I did it a little bit around my eyes. Okay, and I put blue in the eyes there. Okay, so now the last thing you're going to do, after everything is colored, we outlined it in black, and now we're going to crumple the paper into a ball. <gasps> Oh my goodness, yes. We're going to crumple the paper up carefully, okay? We're going to crumple it up. Sometimes you can do this a second time. This is what's going to give the little wrinkles or the crank crinkles or the little cracks in the wax. So when we put the, the cut watercolor on it, it shows through. Okay. Sometimes you can do this a second time, but I think once, once is enough because the paper gets so delicate. But it's okay. So now we're going to unroll it or uncrumple it and lay it flat as best we can. Okay, so you've got this done. Okay, now that you have it flat, you're going to apply a blue or a black watercolor. All right, so I'm, you can use a sponge or a brush. I'm going to use the sponge, so I've gotten my sponge a little bit wet, and I come over here and I get it out the dark blue. But like I said, you can use any color you like, but I'm going to use the traditional sort of looking thing. And then you're going to dab it on the paper. Okay, see how it resists color. Okay, but where there's cracks, it's gonna the watercolor will get in and color the paper. So let me see. Okay. Okay. And you just go over it. You can use do this with a brush, it doesn't matter. Okay. And now we're gonna blot it up with a paper towel. have it. And then you lay it to dry. So now we've blotted up all our water, okay, with um, paper towels, and now we're going to let it dry. So now you have your batik. So if you want to, you can iron this between paper, but with adult supervision, okay? So if you need to iron it between paper, you'd have to put a paper, a couple pieces of this, okay, set it down, and then you're going to cover it, and then you would use a warm iron to flatten it. Okay, if you want, it's not, it's not necessary. But you need to, the important thing here is if you're going to iron it, that you must cover your ironing board because otherwise the crayon will be all over the iron and all over the ironing board and mom will not be happy. And we want a happy mom, okay. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this project. I certainly did and I can't wait to finish it off. And uh, one of the things you can do is laminate it like I showed you earlier. Here's my other fish. Okay, I laminated and it cut off the corners. I rounded my corners. Okay, put a hole punch here and put ribbon through to hang it. So there's many ways, many things you can do. Okay, you're the artist, you be creative. So please send your masterpieces to me, Susan Daniels, or the administrator to the addresses that are there on the screen. If you're camera shy, just send in your work and we'll post it on the TLC website with your name. So don't be shy, please send in, send in your work. 
Also, send in your comments and suggestions. I do enjoy hearing from you, and there's always room for other ideas. Until next week, stay safe, be healthy, and have a blessed week. Bye-bye.